All right, good morning. Uh, we're just going to do a, uh, a bizarro remark. I figured I'd show some of the uh, actual drawing instead of just the inking. Uh, I think I'm going to base this one mostly on the Kurt Swan Bizarro from uh, 1967. <clears throat> And sorry, I've got uh, some guys doing yard work, so you're just going to have to listen to the leaf blower. It should be almost done. <clears throat> Pardon me, it's it's morning, so uh, you'll hear a lot of me going, <clears throat> doing with the this this expression on bizarro but I think it's kind of funny so I'll go with it hey good morning thanks for watching guys my uh, my four-year-old son has recently gotten into bizarro so I was I was very happy when when someone asked for a bizarro remark he, uh, well, he, I was about the same age. I was four when I kind of went through my Superman phase. And, uh, he actually went to school today with a Superman shirt underneath his shirt. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it has a cape attached. And so the cape is like, <laughs> it's poking out of his collar, <laughs> like, and down his back. Uh, he's, he's a funny dude. Mm, good afternoon from Texas. I, uh, I just ordered something from Texas. Uh-oh, my wife is texting me. I will get back to her. Wow, from Israel. That is uh, a little farther than Texas. Thanks for watching. I gotta get these eyes just right. I usually don't show the drawing portion because it's tough for me to talk and think at the same time. Like uh, painting, rendering, inking, all that kind of stuff I can do fairly easily and still carry on a conversation. But uh, drawing is a different, different animal. Wow, Poland. <laughs> See, like, the internet can be an amazing thing. So, thanks for watching. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the one nice thing. Uh, well, there's lots of nice things about being a comic book artist, but one of the, the added perks is that... Uh, you know, you're, you're part of something that's bigger. And so, you know, people will, will look at your artwork if they happen to be a, a fan of this, you know, some superhero that's been around for 70 years. So, uh, you know, it's a, a worldwide phenomenon and it's been going on for so long. It's nice to be a part of that.
this will make his hair spiky. <clears throat> but I, I think I think my son is going to be Bizarro Superman for uh, Halloween, which I'm super excited about. I got to make him a little Bizarro number one. Uh, Little necklace thing. He he watched. I showed him, um, you know, the the animated series from the '90s. You know, the one that came up after uh, Batman the animated series. And uh, you know, he'd he'd seen some of them before, but he, I just showed him all the Bizarro episodes, which I don't, I'm not even sure if I got to see back then. It's so funny. Like I missed. You know, I, I love that both of those series, but I missed a lot of them, a lot of the individual uh, episodes. But we catch up every once in a while. Oh, Sweden. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> and, and Norway? <laughs> Damn. Man, you guys... Whatever you do, don't test me on geography. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I have not known like the countries and capitals since fifth grade. Like I, <clears throat> I used to be able to look at a blank map and fill it all in and tell you you know the names of all the countries and. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm afraid to say, it's just not in there anymore. It's completely gone. I don't know if it's because I'm an American or because <laughs> I'm just me. All right, that's looking pretty good. Oh, I should also mention, I'm using a new paper. Um, so these ones are print, I print out myself. Uh, and so I've started to upgrade for the remarks um, from the regular paper. Uh, this stuff is by Pacific Inkjet. It's pretty thick, so it doesn't work in all printers, but it works in mine. And it is 100% uh, cotton. It, it creates a really nice picture. Um, you know, I, I definitely notice a difference, but then also it is just much better to draw on and much better to paint on. You know, it's not as thick as what I, I use for my regular work, but still pretty good. All right, how am I gonna do the nose? I always see how Kurt Swan did it. <laughs> I'm looking at a picture of Bizarro Lois. All right. I think that'll do. I don't really have room for the, the emblem, the shield, but I'll do my best. Um... And I think, because I like, I like Bizarro when he has a real heavy brow, but since he's slightly looking up, I'm going to, I'll accomplish that with, um, with color as opposed to ink. <clears throat> a couple of stray hairs there. I think I'll do a highlight right on the top there. And then, you know, that's not fully rendered, but it's enough for me to go on. Oh, I just, I opened up a new pen. Um, this is the Pentel brush pen. Usually I use my pink one. Where is my pink one? Yeah, this is the one I usually use, but I'm going to start using two since I end up drawing on the go sometimes. All right, so...
<laughs> Bizarro is the opposite. Yeah, <clears throat> you really you don't want to go down the rabbit hole of like. <clears throat> I was on his Wikipedia page and it, it's just a mess because it's like you don't have to make too too many things opposite before everything just goes off the rails. <clears throat> Hold on, guys. I gotta have some water. All right, and the morning's on. My, my throat is just, well, I sound like an old man. This brush feels a little bit drier than my other one. I might switch to my other one for now. This, this, this one, once you've been using it for a while, uh, sometimes it actually puts out too much ink. Yeah. So if it has, if it has more, more ink that it's feeding the tip, uh, you get a much crisper line. I mean, you can still get some, some dry brush effects, if, especially if you move quickly. But the nice thing about this paper is it's very absorbent. You know, it's it's inkjet printing paper, but it's fully cotton based. Nice little texture to it. Yeah, so uh, I think I'm going to do that from now on. If if you get a print from me and you add a remark to it, it'll include uh, uh, an upgrade of paper because it. I think I think they're like about two fifty sheet, at least for the 11 by 17, and I just bought uh, some of the 13 by 19, although I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the paper's great. <laughs> yeah, I I can't get into like Bizarro's powers. Uh, you know, I was, I was reading up on it and it's like, instead of heat vision, he has cold vision. And instead of cold breath, he has hot breath. <laughs> it's just like, where does it end? And you know, with, with DC, it's, it could be confusing, especially for, you know, someone who hasn't read a lot of the old stuff. Uh, like just the continuity is crazy and the different versions. You know, I mean, you know, any, anytime the stories go on for this long, you're going to get some kind of crazy stuff. But Marvel always seemed to have a, you know, the sliding time scale thing. It, it's not perfect, but for what it is, it works. You know, you can pick up a, a title and have some idea what's going on. I, you know, as as much as I love comics, I've never been a big reader. Um, I've, you know, always loved the art, but most of my DC stuff comes from the the movies and the TV shows. Um, you know, I've read some stuff here and there, a few classics, but uh, like the the monthlies, I just never uh, never got into. I'm trying to think if I ever, because I, I did go through a Marvel phase in my like early 20s where I was buying like, you know, uh, like X-Force or new X-Men every month. There was like a, a, you know, that period of the early 2000s where it was just, I don't know, I just, I really liked everything they were putting out. Not everything, not everything, but like some of my favorite artists quietly and all read, you know, I would pick up anything that they were doing. But yeah, I was just never a big reader, even still. Like, I, I enjoy doing the research, though. Like, so if I'm doing a new character uh, or a character I'm not too familiar with, then uh, I love going back and, and reading some of the kind of defining moments, that kind of stuff. My 
my son uh, has recently gotten into Age of Reptiles by Ricardo Delgado. It's so good. <laughs> and it's great for a four-year-old because, like, first of all, he loves dinosaurs. Right? But who doesn't? But second of all, he can actually read it and follow it because it's there are no words. And so he's he's really he's enjoying that. Like I read it to him, but then he he kind of like looks at it on his own, which is not something he would ever really do before. You know, and I did I actually did the same for my daughter uh, when she was that age. Because I, I, my kid, you know, surprise surprise, my kids are kind of like me, uh, where I just. I I don't enjoy the act of reading. Like converting words <laughs> into into speech in my mind is just uh, I just always hated the process. I did fine in school. Yeah, I, I you know I did well. I did what I had to, but um, like you would never catch me reading for pleasure. I was actually just, I met up with a, a friend from high school who happened to be in the area. And we were, we were talking about it because he was, he was the exact opposite. Uh, he, was, he was reading, uh, I think he said he was reading like Tom Clancy novels in like sixth grade. Uh, whether he was supposed to or not. And, you know, come to think of it, like I did, you know, my, my, my mom is a like textbook voracious reader. And so she was always trying to get me to, you know, go beyond what was required in school and, and actually read for fun. And bless her heart, she tried. <laughs> uh, she still like does like a book a night and I'm just like, I, I now I, I do read, um, but it's usually like I think my my main issue is I just don't I don't enjoy novels I like reading nonfiction, and I I think I prefer my fiction to be um, just in a visual medium. So you know I've always loved movies, comics that kind of thing. But if I'm reading a, if I'm reading a book, I actually like it more if it's a textbook, because it's there's a certain information density that uh, you know you can only get it into your brain if you're get that butt in the seat. Actually, if in high school, I, I would read standing up so that I wouldn't fall asleep. I know I'm not alone. I remember reading about. I can't remember who it was now, but there was somebody who had, you know, it was, it was somebody famous enough to be written about, uh, but this was like way, way back in the day, and he would read while holding a spoon. It might be a famous account, so if, you, if you've heard of this, let me know. But um, He would read while holding a spoon in one hand, and if he fell asleep, the spoon would drop and he would wake up. I remember when I when I read that, I was like, that's me. Bizarro looks like he's like kind of made of ice or something. <clears throat> but uh, speaking of reading, I, I just finished uh, a book I really enjoyed called 19 Ways of Looking at Consciousness. It was a really good book. Uh, author is Patrick House. And he just had, uh, you know, I've, I've read a, a little bit of cognitive science and um, 
I wouldn't say I'm like super interested in it, but I, I enjoy reading about it every once in a while. And this was just like, it was like no other book I've ever read. Uh, it's just, it's basically like 19 different metaphors that are, you know, each describing the same thing, but just really well written and just, just such an interesting take. The one, uh, the one that sticks out in my mind was an interview. Like the chapter is, it's just a transcript of an interview he did with another, uh, I think, neuroscientist. I don't know if I don't know if he was a neurosurgeon or a neurologist, but the guy had brain cancer, and it was just this juxtaposition of this in, incredibly smart guy, like, you know, it's just a, a short chapter, short interview, but you, you can immediately tell, like, the guy is, is crazy smart, you know, he's, like, in his 30s with a PhD, and I want to say, like, early 30s, uh, and unfortunately, you know, diagnosed with terminal brain cancer, but they interviewed him after his, one of his surgeries, where they took out a big chunk of his cerebellum, and just just the level of like self reflection by someone who was a consummate professional and could speak so well about himself and the larger issues. Um, I don't know. It's a really good book. Yeah, so uh, 19 Ways of Looking at Consciousness. Um, I found it. I found the book when uh, the author was interviewed on Econ Talk, which is one of my favorite podcasts. Sorry guys, I haven't, I haven't been talking with it. Let's see if there's any uh, messages. Oh, thanks. Glad you liked uh, Superman's story. Yeah, Tom King was awesome. He was awesome to work with. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the reading, uh, I don't know, I just, it's still, you know, I, I, I love, I love stories, I love uh, getting information, but it's, it's just the physical act of reading that bothers me. Yeah, in fact, I'm always looking, like, I'm always on the lookout for text-to-speech, and that's, that's the thing with, like, all this AI and everything, you know, all, all these amazing abilities, it's still not doing what I want it to. <laughs> so, uh, although I am, you know, I'm prone to um, uh, having certain AI fears, uh, existential ones. Um, we're not there yet. We will eventually, but that's another story. But my, my point is, like, I just want to do very basic things, like uh, read to me, and I would love to be able to correspond with it via speech. You know, basically what, like, what Google Home and Alexa, like, what else they're all supposed to be able to do but can't. You know, like, I don't, we, we actually have both, um, uh, even though I didn't want them. <laughs> but that's another story. Uh, we have both of them, and, and, like, the only thing that they're good for is when you're cooking and you need a timer. And your hands are, aren't free. They're great, great timers. Um, you know, old technology activated by voice. But for everything else, like, I don't know. You know, they're good for um, basic translations. You know, if, you, if you're like, what's the Spanish word for ball? <laughs> like, it'll tell you pelota. 
Uh, but it won't, uh, if you have anything beyond that, it's kind of worthless. Even chat GPT, I don't know. I haven't used it, so I can't really speak to it. But. but yeah, I would love to have like a little computer assistant. You know, basically, basically what Siri is supposed to be. You know, but someone I could talk to and ask questions. And I don't think they're quite there yet. I mean, I've I've heard stories, but I think it's like the paid version which I guess is the point of all this, but I don't know. I won't be getting a subscription anytime soon. Yeah, I tried to, uh, you know, I use, I use a lot of Google products and I tried their uh, Bard and was severely disappointed. Uh, I've heard, I've heard that the Bing search where they incorporate AI is decent, but I haven't tried it. You know, most of the most of the internet searches I do, they're you know, it's all for images. So I need to know what stuff looks like. some progress. I think for, for his eyes, I'll switch to this one, Fudinosuke by Tombo. It's like a little uh, felt tip. It's great. And it's waterproof. I guess, oh yeah, Kurt Swan does the solid eye. He does pretty big, pretty big pupils or irises. I got that zombie look. I'm gonna do it a little bit bigger. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, yeah, Google Home, it's good for weather. Um, although, you know, like we've got an Alexa show and like all I want to do is just show me the weather all the time. And instead it's just like basically ads. But again, you know, I didn't, I didn't want it to begin with. Some nice neck neck lines in there. All right, I think that'll work. Anything else? Let's strengthen that jawline. Shadow.
Now we'll do, let that sit for a second, uh, check to see if there are any comments. <laughs> to play butthole surfers. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're good for uh, playing practical jokes. All right, so we're going to do, uh, so the nice thing about this uh, paper is it, it can stand up to watercolor. So instead of using uh, Copic markers, I'm going to use straight up watercolor. This is my my set. It's mostly Holbein with some Payne's Gray. Now it looks like, looks like red there, but it's Payne's Gray by M. Graham. And... Um, I also keep some gouache here, but we're not going to be using gouache today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we've definitely had some, uh, I guess we call them false positives on, on Google and uh, Alexa. I was just listening to an interview with, uh, what's her name? Yetch? Oh, yeah. Simone, Simone Getch or Yetch? I, I don't know how to spell her name or how to pronounce her name. But, uh, you know, she was talking about Alexa in the home and she took it out after you could, she realized you could just whisper and it would hear you. <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, like, I, I know that's what it's doing all the time, but it, it's still. It's not really worth it. But man, if they ever improve it, I'll use it all the time. Because, you know, I have long, long periods where I'm just doing this. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to you guys now, but. There's all kinds of stuff like I have questions about and just thoughts I have during the day. And just being, it would be nice to be able to basically have a little assistant. Uh, so this is Payne's Gray that I'm using from M. Graham. I think their deal is they they just use like uh, classic single pigment colors, so you kind of know exactly what you're getting. Whereas like Holbein, they'll they'll have all kinds of things, you know, they'll they'll have the basics like yellow ochre, uh, burnt umber, like that that kind of stuff. But then they'll have. Carmen, wine red, which, you know, doesn't really help you. Uh, you just have to experiment with it to know what it's like. All right, let's get some, I think this is Holbein's permanent red, and then I usually mix it up with some, uh, what is this one? Vermilion hue. So vermilion is a very, very bright, bright red. Um, but I don't think it's light fast, so that's why you get the hue. You know, same for uh, some of the toxic colors. I, I tried to get rid of every, everything that was toxic on my palette. I still have some of the tubes, but I don't really use them anymore. So you can see how, how nicely this is going down, like super absorbent. You know, it's, it's not quite ideal because it's, uh, you know, it's made for inkjet. 
So it's, you can feel a slight difference. Uh, I don't know if they use like clay to make it absorbent or, or what the deal, but you know, if you've ever tried to draw on, on ink, inkjet paper, you, you know the feeling. It's specifically photo paper. Uh, you know, whatever coating it is that they put on that, it, it changes things a little bit. But this is, you know, it's still, still very absorbent. It gives me what I need. All right, let's put in some Payne's Gray and a little bit of whatever phthalo blue this is. I'm going to do some shadows. Just basically all the downward facing planes and try and give a little bit a little bit of shade um, and then to give them kind of that icy look you just don't don't do the whole don't do the plane solid just kind of find some little cricks and cracks and whatnot and it'll look like ice or whatever the hell bizarro is made of. Uh, I'm really, I'm looking forward to making my son a little bizarro number one necklace. I don't think I'll have time to do it the way I want, I really want to, but, you know, I'd love to, to make it out of, out of foam and have it look like a uh, real rock, but I doubt, I doubt that I'll have time for that. It's so sad, like, <laughs> My son has such a worse, his dad is so much worse than my daughter's. Uh, you know, because when I had, when I had one kid, like, man, I, I poured a lot of time into just all kinds of stuff for her. You know, obviously I still do, but um, when it's two kids, like, Sorry, son, your dad isn't as good. <laughs> they have fun, though. So it's, I mean, really with that bizarro skin, you just kind of, it's just random, you know. I mean, I, I kind of gave it some top-down light, but the rest was just kind of crazy reflections and whatnot. Thank you. Almost done. I think I'll make I'll make the eyes a little kind of pale, pale yellow. Using some yellow ochre. Make sure it's not too intense. Yeah, there we go. And give him some yellow teeth too. 
I, think I might need to make his teeth not so uh, not so pretty. So I, I like my Bizarro to be more like Frankenstein. Um, like the you know I I like the Kurt Swan version, which this this kind of is. But the Kurt Swan version for me is almost he's too pretty. Um, I really liked like the Frankenstein take from the animated series. You know where like he can't he can't even stand up straight. Like his his legs are always turned inward. I can barely understand what's going on. Poor guy. That's all. I mean, that's why he's he's such an interesting. Uh, like he's not even a villain, and anytime Superman has to stop him, he he just also feels sorry for him. I, th I think they they changed the the origin in the, uh, the animated series a little bit, where he's like, I don't know, I need I need to read the classic one, like the first one, because uh, in the animated series he's a clone created by Luthor. And I don't I don't know if that holds true. Let's strengthen those shadows. Down things a little bit, and then we'll be done. Yeah. So, uh, any last questions? Let me know. Um, see if there's anything to show. That's about it. Oh, I know. I I've been doing. Uh, watercoloring in an old uh, Batman cover. So this was something that um, it was a it was a cover for the series, the animated series. No, the adventure continues, something like that, TAC, um, where I did it digitally. And then my dad did the inks traditionally, but I never did an original piece. So I'm just taking my dad's inks and I'm watercoloring them. And then uh, as soon as I finish this, I'll probably put it up for sale. I, I won't do the background because that'll just take too long, but you can kind of see it faintly here. You know, this is a, a digital printout that my dad inked over. But there's that. Um, oh, yeah, and I, I showed this yesterday on Instagram. I'm working on a series of uh, four by sixes. These will be auctioned off in November at Comic Art Live. And uh, the theme for this season is skulls. So we got the Punisher, we got Mystique, uh, Ghost Rider, which is what I'm yet to do. And I think the, the last one is going to be Red Skull, which is something that someone suggested on Instagram. And then the last one is uh, Skeletor. So lots of stuff coming up. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'm show this. I haven't shown this yet. This is, um, I'm doing a, a gift for, uh, Josh Adams. This is, uh, Neil Adams. <laughs> the contrast looks too high on that, but it's, it's actually a very light painting. Um, I'm just going to do a couple. Um, you know, he, he passed away last year. So I've been kind of working on that every, every once in a while. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Um, any other questions? Any upcoming big projects? Not Nothing I can talk about. Uh, I'm going to do six, uh, six covers for DC. I've got one uh, Marvel X-Men cover that it should be coming out in October. And then I have a couple other projects. Uh, well, I, I, yeah, I can't, I can't really say anything, but they're, they're, they're super fun. And as soon as I'm allowed to, I will definitely share. But, you know, lots of classic, classic characters I've always wanted to draw and paint. So I hope you guys enjoy it.
All right. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, I'll try and do this again next week, maybe next Friday. Uh, Friday seems to be the best way to do it. And I, I usually alternate between YouTube and uh, Instagram because they seem to be the easiest. All right. All right, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Take care.